with another episode of Mastering Social Media for Schools. I'm pumped for this one. You guys, we're going to be talking all about Instagram Reels. And the impact that it can have on your Instagram presence is amazing. We've got a lot of great notes listed in the show notes. So you're going to be able to look at a lot of examples from what other schools are doing. And most specifically, what our guest today is doing, Melissa Reese. Now, Melissa is the communications manager in Allenstown School District. It's a large school district in Pennsylvania. By the way, she's all by herself with 17,000 students and 25 schools. Um, So she is superwoman. I have determined this. Melissa, you are superwoman uh, for doing what you do. Uh, She's got a passion uh, for for social media and meeting parents where they're at. And we're really going to focus on, you know, what is Instagram Reels, why you should consider using it. She's going to share some videos she's done and kind of how she goes about it. Um, And then, you know, really diving into some nuts and bolts of making Instagram reels work for your school. So I'm excited at the end of this video, uh, at this, of this, well, video, I I do this show on YouTube, right? So, uh, but, but at the end of this podcast, my challenge is try it, look at a few and try it. And I think you'll be, um, you know, excited with what you see. Uh, Now, before we get in to today's episode, which it's episode 85 already. Um, I just want to remind you that our our boot camp registration is now open uh, for January of 2022. It's right around the corner. We're already getting some spots filled. So our boot camp is our five week uh, program to really teach you the foundational pieces of making social media work for you. Um, We talk about the organization and the setup and then do a deep dive into Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. Um, and it's a great opportunity to learn in a small and small group environment where you're going to get your questions answered. Um, there's a combination of learning uh, on your own with some training videos, but then question and answer and actually holding you accountable for taking action. Uh, I got a brand new video actually out on my website. If you check out socialschoolforedu.com, Check out the services and go to boot camp. I've also got uh, it linked in the show notes today. Uh, but but check out that short little video because it'll explain and you'll be able to hear from a few former campers of what they got out of the program. But if you're really looking to elevate your storytelling and the way you engage with your community in 2022, this is going to be your jump start. Um, and you know it, you you have to devote three to five hours a week. Uh, to really make the most of it, but it's condensed to five weeks. And so it might be the perfect time, January, February, to do this for your school. So um, let's get uh, let's get going. Um, we want to jump into today's interview with Melissa Reese. All right, my K-12 PR tip today before we get started is about Instagram Reels and a little tip about collecting content when thinking about reels. So when you're at your next event, and Melissa's gonna talk about it a little bit, um, get a combination of vertical video and vertical pictures that you can then use in your Instagram reel. So um, it's gonna make a lot more sense once you've seen a few reels, which we want you to watch. Um, They're linked in the show notes. Um, But getting that combination of footage, both pictures and short videos, and we're talking short videos, two to three seconds long, that you're going to be able to piece together to create a nice Instagram reel. That's my challenge to you. If you've ever done Instagram stories, Instagram reels is a little bit, it reminds me of an Instagram story, but it's total video content. And so it's fun, uh, but just get to that mindset. If you want to put some reels together, If you're at an event, get pictures and videos, and that'll make uh, putting a reel together super easy. So that's today's K-12 PR tip. Now let's get into our discussion with Melissa Reese. Hey, Melissa, welcome to the podcast. Hi, so glad to be here. Yeah, you know, nothing, uh, technology challenges, nothing that uh, Melissa and I can't handle. Um, But I'm really excited to have you here, Melissa Reese. Um, Why don't you give a little 
introduction to kind of, you know, your background and your role as communications manager there in Allentown School District? Sure. So I got into school PR by working with a small agency here in Pennsylvania. We actually worked with a lot of private charter parochial schools. So I was kind of focused on like enrollment marketing and um, but also provided support for schools on website and social media. When I joined the Allentown School District, um, they were very social media wary and I saw opportunity to kind of streamline the district's approach, but also our 25 schools. So that was a huge undertaking. And, you know, I'm, my approach is all about meeting parents where they are. So if that is while they're standing outside of school or waiting in the car in the pickup line, sometimes that's not going through emails, that's on social. So I've made a big commitment here in Allentown to really up our game on social media. And it's, it's something I love. Prior to working in school PR, I was in live events and sports. And that is, you know, I don't, I don't really have formal training in social media. I don't think a lot of us do. <laughs> we learn by doing. Um, but, you know, one of my experiences in sports, I was working with a minor league team and we were like, let's make a Twitter. What do we do with it? We don't know, but we just made it and we ran it and we would tweet random things and about games and ticket giveaways. And that was over 10 years ago at this point. And it's just so crazy how that, that this has all evolved and how much I've learned along the way. And I think how much everybody else in, in school PR has as well. <laughs> Definitely. So how long have you been in Allentown School District? I am about to celebrate my fourth anniversary here. Okay. Yeah. So still pretty new, especially when you think of a year and a half of that was in the pandemic. So, um, and how many years were you with that, that agency that served all those different types of schools? That was about two and a half years. And okay. amazingly, I didn't even know what Pennsburg or Ensper was. And I was in that role. So I was taking my kind of business approach to helping schools. And it wasn't until I, I came to Allentown that I really learned about some of these organizations and associations and then really got involved with them. Yeah, which is how we met. I think we probably met. Maybe did we meet for the first time at the Pensbury event when at I was Pensbury. there? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and that's in, in Pennsylvania um, when we were doing in-person stuff and it was so awesome. Um, that's great. So, so you talked about social media and that's a passion of yours. And I love, you know, your statement of we got to meet the parents where they're at, um, which in many cases is on these little, you know, these little uh, uh, computers, um, phones in their hands. So how, first of all, how big is Allentown for, for enrollment? So we're with our 25 schools, we have about 17,000 students. Okay. And then how big is your office? One. <laughs> okay. It is me. <laughs> so that's craziness, you guys, right there, right? Because we know um, you should probably have at least three people in your department, kind of the math that I do with a lot of the schools I talk with. So how do you stay on top of it all, Melissa? Uh, K-12 PR well chats. No. <laughs> um I we get I get a lot a little bit of support from freelancers um I, again being in a pandemic um haven't really needed to cover a lot of events um right before the pandemic I was about to launch a student reporter system and I'm really really hoping to get that up and running in the next month or so so you know when I can't go to the rivalry basketball game right before Christmas because I'll be out of town I've got somebody there to cover it and send me pictures and you know, kids are a great resource because they already know how to take a million great pictures on their phones. Whereas sometimes, you know, if I ask, and I, I know we all do this, we ask adults to send us pictures and you're like, not the best, but I'll take it because I got nothing else right now. Right. Um, oh, I, yeah, I love that. You kind of got to divide and conquer. Um, yeah. And maybe we'll have you back on uh, later. I, I think Christine Peck had a great uh, student intern program at her school out in California. That was a great episode to listen to, too. So if you haven't listened to that yet, you could you yeah. could listen in. Um, so how do you manage the social media aspect then for a district your size? Like what pages are you managing and kind of how do you get your content? So I exclusively manage the district pages. Um, our family and community engagement office is a backup, but she doesn't really post much. She's my in case of emergency. And then at the school level, we do still have school pages for everybody. Um, okay. We have school Instagrams and Twitter for everyone. And I have someone at the building level who manages them 
And then I have the ability to also, um, I use a platform uh, through School Messenger called K-12 Social, where you know I can say our vaccine clinic for five to 11 is on Monday. And I have a group set up that is all of our elementary Facebook pages. And in one click, I can push to all their pages. So it's, it's a great management tool. Um, for Facebook, it doesn't really allow me to do Twitter much, but our audiences are much smaller there. And then there is a beta version of Instagram where I can do a little bit of scheduling, but now I've, I've moved to doing so much more in creator studio and business suite. Um, and all the schools are set up their business suite as well. So okay. just working on training the buildings on using that. <laughs> so the school level you said has Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, do they have? Yes. Okay, and then what channels for the district are you doing specifically? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are the three primary. Um, I also help with the YouTube. Um, that has almost been exclusively IT and athletics since the pandemic, which has been great. Um, but I'll record and post things there as well. And then I work with our HR department to get things on our LinkedIn account. Okay. Awesome. I love the partnerships that you talked about with like YouTube and then with LinkedIn, because I think that's critical. Um, and YouTube, I mean, it's not, it, it's kind of a, a repository, right? A holding space for your mm -hmm. videos. It's not as social, right? So there's right. not as much interaction and comments going on there as there is in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. YouTube's really just been, um, live streaming our sports has has helped immensely, especially because last winter, um, a lot of districts in our area didn't allow fans. So live streaming sports was the only way. And we didn't invest in one of those fancy sites that come in and, and you know, set up a multi-camera system with a scoreboard. We got our IT department out there with the camera and connected it to YouTube. And that's what worked for us. Right. Um, yeah. And a lot of schools did the same. Okay, so Melissa, we could talk about a lot of stuff and we could be here all day because we, we sure could. Um, but I wanted to specifically bring you on to talk about Instagram Reels because um, you have been doing a fantastic job with your Instagram page there at Allentown. And I think, you know, now that, it, you know, Facebook has Facebook Reels now, which are mainly either Instagram reels or TikToks being taken over to Facebook, um, but it'll evolve. Um, definitely. I mean, even my husband is just like, what's this dance that we're, you know, I'm just like, oh, honey, we're not going to do that. But, um, but it's more than that. Um, but, but for people who are wondering, oh my gosh, is this Instagram reels thing really worth checking out? You know, I just kind of want to talk through it. So in your definition, what is an Instagram reel? I mean, short answer, short videos. When Instagram rolled out reels, it was probably, a, I think it was a little over a year ago. Um, it was there try to, trying to tackle TikTok, um, which seems impossible. And then, you know, a couple months ago, they made that announcement that they're no longer a photo sharing platform, which for school PR, that was, Instagram was our photo platform. If we didn't use photo albums or flickers, Instagram was where you could easily drop 10 pictures in a carousel and be like, look, we covered this event today. Um, Reels is the video answer to that. So yes, it's the fun dances. It's the voiceover tutorials, you know, where someone bakes a cake in eight seconds. Um, but it's also slideshows of different, um, you know, and it, your algorithm is going to be custom to you, I get a lot of dogs and travel, um, you know, people taking these amazing vacations and it's these breathtaking uh, photos set to just a really simple song. Right. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the first step always to understanding something is to observe it for yourself. And what you're describing is what you see in your Instagram reel, you know, section of Instagram is going to be based on your what you like and how often you like how long you watch some videos will determine what other videos that they end up showing you. Um, and I just want to let everybody know who's listening right now. Um, I just recently wrote a blog on using Instagram. Instagram reels for your school. And so we're going to make sure to link that in the show notes, um, along with uh, Melissa's page, because she's really got a, a variety of Instagram reels that she's done and some that have reached 
you know, 40, 50, 000, almost 50,000 people. Okay, and those, yeah. those who have reached, you know, a thousand people. And so, um, so if, if you, you know, if, if, if somebody was like, well, why should I even use this? Like for, for my school page, isn't this just for dance, you know, dance routines or, or, you know, funny memes to basically saying stuff to the office, right. Or friends uh, where they're voicing over. So why should schools consider using it in your opinion? So I've found that it's, it's definitely growing our followers. Now, are they all within our district? Maybe not. Is it more school districts, more school PR people just looking for ideas? Maybe. Um, but if you think about, you, you know, we know that Facebook and Instagram's algorithms are pushing video more. So, you know, we already have the comparison of don't take a picture of a Word document about cheerleading tryouts. You know, my recommendation to the schools is always what's more engaging, a picture of a flyer or your senior cheerleader captain, a picture of her saying, come join cheerleading. Now you can take that and make it a video and say, hey, high school, I'm so-and-so cheerleading captain for the Deer of High School Huskies. I want to see you on Tuesday at cheerleading tryouts. Turn that into a reel. It might not have the fun audio, but it's definitely going to reach more kids, well, more users, and, and ultimately, you know, kind of grow your following. Yeah, Instagram is really favoring reels right now because like you said, this is this is Instagram's uh, response to TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's Meta's response right now because Meta is the, Sorry, Meta. Is the company. But but they have they own Instagram, they own Facebook. So that's their response. And so they're really trying to encourage more creators, hey, use this platform because there's a lot of consumption there. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, it may be, you're looking at exposure, right? And in, in, in a lot of cases with social media, you're looking at impressions, like how many people are really realizing what's going on at our school. And it's the same thing with reels, but the data does not lie. So at Allentown, right as of this moment, Melissa has 3,170 followers. She serves those followers through her Instagram stories, through her um, Instagram posts. But on Reels, it opens you up to so many more people that will hopefully turn into followers. But mm -hmm. we're talking your very first video reached over 18,000 people. And that was a little tour of a new building. Is that right? Yep. That was our uh, brand new elementary school that opened during the pandemic. We finally got to have a ribbon cutting. And, you know, in addition to me being there with the big fancy camera with my phone, IT set up for the live stream, I went through and I was like, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures. But I got there a few minutes early. And all I did was I ran down the main hallway of the building, took a couple of videos, ran back and got a shot outside. Once it was all over, I think it was even the next day. I was like, all right, now I think I can put this together and this can be my first reel. I definitely played around with creating some on my personal account over the summer and really decided that once school started was when I was going to try them on the district account because I wanted to, I wanted it to be a little bit more strategic and a little bit more meaningful than just trying to do something over the summer for the sake of trying it. Right. And uh, as you're listening to this, you may want to pause and you may, may just want to check out a few reels to know exactly what we're talking about. It's intimidating maybe at first, um, but once you do it, you kind of understand how to bring pieces of still shots and video. Mm -hmm. You can put, they've got music in the background that you can add and that it's, it's copyright free because it's through the Instagram app. Um, you can add stickers, you can add words, um, you can make videos fast forward uh, or go slower. Um, there's just a whole bunch of capacity of video editing within the Reels platform. You can also edit video outside of Reels if you want to and then bring it in and put music to it. Um, so there's quite a few different ways. But um, can you just kind of maybe walk through how you create adding photos or videos? And, and I know it's a little bit hard because this is a this is a podcast. And so we're, it's not an exact how to tutorial, <laughs> which we did 
in our membership group. So remember, um, you know, Melissa's part of our, our membership group and uh, some of those things we really handhold and kind of walk step by step. So that's a bonus of that. Uh, but for our listeners, can you kind of walk through how you create one? Sure. So I'm going to use the example of um, our rivalry football game. So again, I'm there, camera, phone, trying to capture live stream of senior awards, you know, got six hands trying to do five things and, and all that. But I knew that that was an opportunity. I was like, I'm going to make a baller reel out of today. Now, again, rivalry game. So I've got to do fairness. So I've got to cap capture equal footage from both teams. So, you know, something really simple. You line up all your senior cheerleaders. You're like, hey guys, can I get a group photo for Instagram? They're like, okay, yes. And they're cheerleaders and they're amazing students. So they smile and they look happy. And I'm like, can you guys do something silly for me? I'm going to just do a quick pano left to right, roll your palms, smile, give me a go team. They do that. Two second video. So then, you know, I'm capture both teams running out. Then I go over to the band and say, can you just like, you, you know, bang on the drum or um, wave to me if you're the drum major. You're going to take these little two second videos when I'm already taking pictures. So it's not even so much different than my normal approach to an event. Um, and then again, something similar, same thing. I sat down the next day and was like, all right, now I'm going to make these reels. So to start, um, I save a lot of audio. If as you're watching reels, you'll see the audio at the bottom. It kind of scrolls across. Some of them are songs, you know, some of them are bits of songs you might not know. Um, but if it has an up arrow, that means it's trending, which means it's automatic with it, uh, which means Instagram is automatically going to push your reel to more people anyway, because you're using that audio that's trending. So, um, you know, I was, I was just thinking like hype songs, it's football, it's rivalry, who cares who won? <laughs> it's, it's hype music. Um, so I was looking for just something upbeat and fun. And, um, you know, that coming in hot song is, is something that I think that I like it. Um, so did that for the first one and just kind of mixed a lot of those short two second video clips. Um, and those reels both reached over 30 to 35, 40, close to 40,000 people at this point. Um, another approach is sometimes, um, you know, I've tried to be a little more consistent with this since the school year started every Friday, just anytime I've been in a building, do a Friday Instagram post of, Hey, check out what's happening in our schools. But then take those 10, you know, you're limited to 10 in the carousel. But if you do an Instagram reel, you maybe can have a little, a couple more pictures. Um, you know, so I'll take the same caption and, you know, play it up a little bit. Um, one of the new tools that Instagram rolled out is syncing your photos to the audio. So it's a little bit less editing. I found it's a little slower. They don't, they don't change every beat. It'll kind of be like picture picture. So it, it, it slows it down a little bit more, but that's at least a good start. If you're, if you don't think that you can have video editing skills or the time to edit one, try just uploading, you know, here was our Friday student celebration at such and such a school, drop in your 10 pictures to a, a trending audio track and see what happens, see where it lands. I mean, that's, don't feel like you have to put hours into, into creating one. Um, and if you start to, you know, consume and watch other, other reels and then other education, what other people in education are doing with reels, you might see something that sticks and it's like, you know what, I can recreate that. And that's kind of where I've been. Yeah, exactly. And in, in the blog that we're referencing, mm -hmm. we've got El Paso ISD, Ben Lapine Schools, um, Pulaski Academy, um, Arizona Lutheran Academy, Colleen ISD, Sunnyside School District 201, um, New Auburn of what I have done a little bit. And so you'll get to see some examples and then this will all make sense. Um, one thing that I, because you gave great advice of using some trending music can help. Um, one tip is uh, set your account to a creator account yeah. because then you're going to open up all of the audio options. If you keep your um, Instagram account as a business account, you won't have quite as many of those audio options, right? Right. And I, I know, I think in the last membership chat we had, some people were concerned about shifting away from the business account and having issues in business suite. Um, 
I haven't experienced that. My only issues with is the suite or sometimes it double posts, but I think that's a business suite creator studio issue, not a Instagram creator account issue. So yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't have any issues with it connecting. It's still a business account, but it's kind of labeled as a creator. So they're giving you a few more tools as you create things like reels. Um, and, you know, I don't know, have you found a perfect time to post your reels or have you really timed it out of when you decide to push publish? Usually I'm trying to do Friday afternoons just because that at least gives me the week to get some content. Um, I have one, it's sort of, it's, I'm actually breaking the formula here. Um, last, last Friday, I broke the formula by stealing a TikTok from the school. Um, the one that I didn't let them, they just made it, but it's cute. Uh, they unveiled a new mascot at the pep rally. So I just took their TikTok right from their Instagram page um, and was able to, to share it on ours. And it got a decent amount of reach, despite what they say about despite what Instagram says about not promoting reels that have the TikTok logo, it still did well. Um, tonight, I for this afternoon, I just have a really cute video of um, a teacher. She was out on the playground doing some phonological awareness with kids. They're clapping, they're dancing. Um, I'm not gonna put audio over it. I'm just gonna see what happens. So <laughs> yeah. Um, Friday afternoons have been my go-to, but again, those ones for the football game, I think I waited until Saturday night to post them. Okay. Because some say, you know, waiting until afternoon or evening when mm -hmm. your students may be consuming, yeah. maybe, maybe a trick. Um, and, and also just posting them around the same time when you do post them can help. Um, I have really found and I don't know if this is this is true, you know, you're going to post some that you work on and you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, this is going to do so awesome. And then mm -hmm. it reaches a thousand people, which is still fine. But again, you know, some of Melissa's posts, she's got 3000 followers. Some of them are reaching almost 40,000 people. That is incredible reach. New Auburn, when I started doing uh, reels, our monthly reach on Instagram was about the match of our followers, about 800. Because you're really not reaching new people. It's people that are following your stuff already. Mm -hmm. When I went to start doing uh, reels, 8,000. So it 10 x my reach or 10 x my impressions because I started using this. And so it is valuable to try. And some of the things that have done really well, which you wouldn't expect, I mean, a little kid hula hooping from Fayed, and that's all I did. And I did a Friday song because it was Friday. Um, it reached over 3000 people and I didn't ed it edit it really at all. It's just I put music to it, put a Friday sticker on it and had this little boy hula hooping. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's, I think sometimes the shorter, the better with videos yeah. because people, they, you know, obviously Instagram can show more videos in, you know, different ones because people have short attention spans, you know, and so they can show more of the short videos and less of the long videos. Have you found that to be true? I actually, yeah. So there was one week where, you know, I was trying to do that Friday recap and, you know, I'm like, all right, I've got, I went to four schools this week. I've got video from all four schools. I got middle, elementary, high, I got it all covered. This is going to be great. Put it out there. All right. One of the, like, I think it was at four schools and I had probably like eight or nine clips. One of those clips was from a rocket launch. So I took just the rocket launch clip and put it to one of the trending audio. And that one instantly like blew up way bigger than the other one. Even though the other one had the rocket launch in it. And it was, you know, one of those Friday, like awesome, have fun songs, um, just a rocket launch. And that was probably three seconds as opposed to, I think I was maybe between 15 or 30 for the longer one. Cause I was like, oh, I gotta fit a whole week in one reel. <laughs> maybe you don't, maybe it's, you know, you just capture that one little moment um, and, and save everything else for pictures. Cause I, you know, the, the photos are still reaching families and, and they still get to celebrate their students by swiping across the carousel. And if you say like, here's a uh, highlights of the week from X, X, X and X school, parents are going to scroll because they want to see their school. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's good, good tips. And when you when you get in there and post, um, you're able to select what your cover image is going to be. Mm -hmm. It can show up on your feed. So basically on your grid, the reel can be there. There's also a separate tab for reels where you can just watch all of the reels that you create. Um, and then you can even share the reel to your story. Um, and you can download it if you wanted to then also share it like to a Facebook reel, which I haven't done a ton of. Um, I did I did try one for my business and I think that one worked fine. Um, you'd think Facebook and Instagram would play nicer together um, as far as like you mentioned the TikTok thing. Um, now, what about hashtags? So I see that you are consistently using a bunch of hashtags when you post your little description. I've done it both ways. I've done a bunch of hashtags and I haven't, and like some of them still reach a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. But what's your advice when it comes to using hashtags when you post your reel? So I actually have a note saved in my phone that is hashtags for reels. Um, I've also started following some. So, you know, you don't have to follow the account, but you can follow teachers of Instagram. And I think that's where you're going to find a lot of educators who are trying to be funny. And so even if my, you know, it's a rocket launch. I'm still going to tag it as teachers of Instagram. So it's kind of a way to get into some of those things that maybe people, they follow the hashtag um, as opposed to following your school. So a lot of my hashtags are really generic, you know, teachers of, in actually I can pull it up. Um, education, Lehigh Valley, Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, Allentown, Allentown, Pennsylvania, you know, so I tag our town. Um, I tag teachers of Instagram. If it's STEM related, I'll drop STEM ed in there. I'll drop arts education in there, music. Um, yeah, I took a note from you and started tagging Friday and TGIF on Fridays. And I've, you know, in my research of doing this, the lifespan of a reel is for some reason longer than anything else on social. So those Friday posts and those TGIF posts, I may have posted them two Fridays ago but Instagram will push them again with the hashtags. So you might start to see, um, you know, with those football ones we were talking about, I tagged them with Friday Night Lights. And then the following week, they got even more views, even though they were five or six days old at that point. Whereas you're not going to, you're not going to see a tweet get more likes after five or six days. The tweet is long gone. Right. Um, so I, I find it, you know, especially the more generic hashtags, like, yeah, your school hashtag. Is anybody following that? No, not really. But if it's, if it, you just generally tag education, your area, it might pop up in other people's feeds because they follow those hashtags if they're generic enough. Um, do you usually do like the hashtag FYP or for your page? Okay. Are you do okay. <laughs> that's that's like Friday TGIF. I try and push it in there if I remember. But okay. it's like, yeah, I try. Okay. And that's supposed to be maybe like, you, yeah, yeah, to trend if people are following similar stuff that they're going to get the for you page. Um, so you're going to be able to look at, at Melissa's page and see exactly which hashtags she's using on which posts. But I really would recommend like Melissa has it. She has it in a note on her phone because you're going to create your Instagram reel on your mobile device. Mm -hmm. You can't create it on the desktop. Um, you could create a video and incorporate it in there, but you're going to end up posting it from your phone. So you'll want to have um, that easy copy paste uh, available in regards to some of maybe those hashtags that you want to use. Mm -hmm. um, you can create, I know people have talked about creating videos in Canva. Um, I have that. I have our graduation announcement ready to go uh, for when our board approves it next Thursday. Um, so hopefully I'll have a, hey, graduation class of 2020 reel ready to go. In addition to everything else, I had a really hard time getting it out of Canva and onto my phone. For whatever reason, I was trying to download it out of the app on my phone and different elements were disappearing and the, um, like the, the effects weren't working. And, you know, I'd look at it and I'm like, no, that's not the video I made. And then I'd go back on the desktop and it would be fine. So I don't know if anybody else out there has issues with that, but that was just my, I've had a lot better luck making it directly on my mobile device instead of in Canva, which I love Canva. 
Yeah, and when once you get used to it, it should be fine. Just a reminder, if you're making anything in a video video format on another platform, you want to make it 1080 by 1920. Yeah. So that is the vertical dimensions of what Instagram uh, reels are. It's just like an Instagram story. So it's 1080 pixels wide by 1920 pixels high. Um, and if you have iMovie or if you have, I was using Camtasia or um, even Adobe products or whatever, you can you can create those pretty easily. Um, so you just, you know, my my challenge, and I think Melissa's too, is you just got to try it, right? Um, but but if listeners right now, Melissa, are on the fence about trying it, I've got too much other stuff to do. This is too overwhelming. Um, what would you say? One, find a student. <laughs> yes. They can help you. Um, and that's our, our second reel was a kid. I, I played it. I said, do you know, you know, this audio? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, all right, I need you to do that. And then I'll type in the questions. Don't worry about it. Um, my other advice, I, I pulled up the analytics on our followers. I felt like our account was good, but it was a little stagnant. Um, since I've started doing reels, we've gotten 271 new followers. That's in the last three months. That's since school started. That's since I've committed to this. Um, and we haven't had any snow days yet. So right. you know, we all know snow days are great for adding new followers. <laughs> um, you know, I think it, it speaks to growing your audience. Um, and I, I think it's, it's fun too. You know, when you make one that you're like, yeah, this is cute. I would watch this. Um, it, it is, it's what's next too. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to do TikTok, which I, I do not, I have said multiple times, we will not have a district TikTok. If the school wants to start it, go right ahead, but you're just creating another channel this is your creating content for a channel that most of us already have. Right. Yeah. I love it. Okay. We did a deep dive. Melissa, you're pretty advanced, I would say, when it comes to social media, mm -hmm. um, but you are a part of our membership group here at Social School for EDU. So can you just kind of explain why you even decided to join? Because again, you, you kind of seem like you know a lot of this stuff. Um, what, what made you make that decision? I think I was, you know, just looking for more resources and ideas. Um, I think in the membership group, one of the things I always go to is that template directory. Um, you know, sometimes when you, when you are a shop of one and you have to worry about the press release and the announcement and then putting it on the website, sometimes the thing that falls to the wayside for me is creating the graphics for social. So for me, it's really easy to go in the Canva directory, snag a template, drop in the announcement. And I'm like, okay, I didn't have to have you know, I didn't have to spend time doing that. Um, and then, you know, in the membership group, we also talk about some things that are, are not social related, like how we're handling these different um, different issues that we're all facing. Um, you know, I, knock on wood, fingers crossed, our district has been lucky with some of the, the recent controversies that have hit other districts, but it's good to know how everyone else is reacting in case it does come my way. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of all in this together. And um, yeah, we, we have a Canva template directory that are school specific templates that we can use. And Melissa, I used it this morning. So I had three pictures to recognize a little girl in our district. And I'm like, I am the most like illiterate when it comes to design. And so I just found one that had three pictures and then I was able to manipulate it enough to be out and it looks awesome now. So um, I love that part too. Um, that, that's great. So as we kind of wrap up, what's your best social media tip um, for listeners? So, you know, I, I think we should celebrate, it, you know, we all have the big things we know we need to celebrate. But it's celebrating those little things. Um, I've And I've gotten some of our schools to buy into this, that sometimes all you need to do is go into, hey, this is Miss So-and-So's class. And today they're studying this under the microscope and it's kids engaging in academics. And then, you know, it's those kids that don't normally get the recognition because they're not the athletics, they're not the activities, they're not the theater kids. Um, and it's good to see the real picture of, of your school. And that's where um, having as many schools as I do, that's where I get content. You know, I have a handful of schools that I know. I'm like, all right, if I'm stuck, I know that they're going to have posted something in the last day or so 
that I can then read that I can take and repurpose for the district account, whether it is, hey, check out what's happening at such and such middle school, or as a part of, you know, a week highlights from the week, here's what happened at elementary, middle and high. Um, so it's, it's getting everybody to kind of believe in the, that these kids are worth celebrating no matter where you are. Um, and that's in an urban district where I am. And, you know, there's a lot of outside forces that um, make our kids think that they don't deserve to be celebrated a lot. It's definitely a big part of my job to make them feel like they are celebrated and, you know, we believe in them. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you're doing great work. Um, so on your your Instagram page for Allentown is at Allentown Schools, and Allen is spelled A-L-L-E-N. Um, we're going to link that all, but I just wanted to mention it while everybody's listening. Now, if they want to stay connected to you, Melissa, because now you're like their Instagram real idol, what's the best way to stay connected to you? Um, I am active on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my email, if you want to drop that in the notes, that's fine. That's Reese M at Allentown SD. Uh, we've got really weird spam filters. So maybe, uh, you know, a, a DM on Twitter or Instagram might get me faster. <laughs> okay. And what's your, uh, what's your username on Twitter? On Twitter, I am I'm looking at, make sure it's right. Um, I am Melissa underscore Ashley with two Y's. And then my personal Instagram. That's really just a lot of puppy and yoga content. Um, but that's Melissa underscore Ashley with two Y's and then the number one after it, because apparently there's another one of me out there. Craziness. <laughs> um, well, the world needs more you, Melissa. So I love it. We're going to link all of those directly in the show notes. So you guys will have that. Our challenge is just try one and yeah. then let us know. Like you can email me, I'm at and Andrea at socialschoolforedu.com, or you can t uh, get us on Twitter, right? And let us know that you tried because we're going to learn and don't be afraid, right, to fail. I've, I've posted them on my business page and it's reached a couple hundred people and I'm like, oh my God, I'm just going to take this down. And then I remember, no, Andrea, you're learning. And so just tell yourself, if you don't get a post that reaches reaches thousands and thousands it's okay you're gonna all of a sudden post some kid doing the hula hoop reaching 3,000 people on a page with 750 followers and you're gonna be like this is awesome so mm -hmm. um I just want to encourage you with that any at last encouraging words from you Melissa no it's, I think it's a lot of fun um and if anybody needs any help I'm I'm here I can give you some tips and tricks and um you know or check out the page and see what we've done so far but thank yeah. you so much yeah well thanks for being here and thank you guys all for listening uh go 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 forth and create um and uh we will definitely see you guys all uh next week on the podcast when we have an, another wonderful guest um but thanks for joining us melissa have a great day thank you yep bye-bye <laughs>